First things first, today we need to figure out where we're putting this, despite the minus temperatures, which believe me, it is below, below zero. Now, where do I put you? On this side, I think there's only the exhaust we have to deal with. Meanwhile, on the other side, there's the fuel tank and the step. Okay, so... <coughs> oh, this is terrifying. Oh. So this is the exhaust. That's where the exhaust gases will come out. So we don't want to mount it anywhere behind there because it might get too hot and the exhaust gases might interfere with it. So we need a nice solid chunk of metal to attach this to. So we're thinking this space is pretty clean. Look at that. What's here? There's one wire that must be for the side light. So I actually think in European models this is used where the fuel filler cap is. Because obviously they just build the same vehicle and then swap the sides. So this is a nice solid... It's hollow but it's a chunk of metal. So I was thinking... Make sure you get the right way up. Is that the way up? I can't tell. I'm, I'm not... I can't yeah, see that's, that's the right way up. Well, maybe, maybe we'll go this way. <laughs> there we go. So the inlet and the outlet are on top there and we'll drill through the van. And then all the exhaust, the air intake and the fuel take are all here. Yeah, and what, what, what I like about this is, um, I, I, can't, I can't, can't reach the point, but what I like about this is that so uh, the van exhaust is here and we have the chance to point the heater exhaust in the exact same direction. If we didn't mount it here, I mean, I guess we could mount it anywhere we want. Whoa, don't drop it. Along here, but that requires drilling into the side of the van. What about the bar next to the the exhaust? This one? Yeah. Mm. If I were to wedge it right up against... Okay, so it's yeah. not quite low, so... Not I, quite deep enough, no. Well, okay, what, what is wrong with putting it on the original bar, that one? Nothing as far as I can tell. Depends where it comes through on the inside of the van. So if we were to come on the inside, the heater's gonna be mounted somewhere along this axis here, because this is where the bar is on the outside, which means that the uh, heating pipe's gonna come up somewhere within this vicinity. So we know that. I'll leave that there. What we also know, heat matrix. Don't need that. Do you know which way this goes up? I don't know. We know we want it about there because we want that hot air to blow into the van and we don't want to blow it out into where the sliding door is. So it's going to be somewhere around there. And then this, which is our heat exchanger, is going somewhere in there. Not sure exactly the orientation, whether it's going to be that way or the other way, but we want it there because this is where the shower is, so we want the hot water to immediately go from here to the shower. However, what we don't know is where to put all of the tanks. So that is the header tank and the fuel tank. So uh, we have these big, big, big lobs of plastic that have to go somewhere. Now, ideally, we want at least the header tank on the inside and it would be best if the fuel tank is on the inside as well. So the only semi-convenient place to put any of these is underneath the seats. But we have had certain trouble finding tanks that would fit underneath the seat. Uh, so let's just start with the header tank. So the header tank is where all the glycol mixture, the antifreeze, is stored. So we definitely want this tank on the inside because we don't want to have to worry about freezing and we want to be able to fill it easily if we need to when we're inside the camper van. I mean, we could put it in the engine bay if we did want to put it on the outside, although we did have a poke around in there and there's actually not that much space for that taller tank in there as well. And the other thing is, at the moment, we're not connecting our inside heating hydronic system to the van's coolant system. I know you can do that. You can connect the two so you can preheat the engine with the hydronic heater. But for simplicity's sake, we're not going to do that, at least at the moment. The problem about trying to mount this tank, we have to have it the highest point in the system because the air bubbles that are trapped in the system when we bleed the system 
have to be able to escape through the tank because we don't want the air bubbles running through our system and running through the fan matrix and the hydronic heater itself because that's just going to cause some damage. <laughs> so unless we want it as an ornament on the wall somewhere nope. as the highest point. Nope. Then it has Not to... even funny. Okay. It's going probably under the seat. So if we try and put the header tank under this seat. You got it. So this is the shallowest part of the compartment we have here. So this is the uh, knobs at the bottom touching. Okay. So as you can see, this this is too high. Yeah. So now we move that at the lowest point and it looks much better. It, it fits it underneath this. However, that's still touching down here. So obviously we need to lift it. So now when I lift it, that's probably about two to three centimeters. That's two fingers, two and a half fingers width down there. And the pipes we have are quite big. They don't, they don't bend that easily. So I have certain concerns about how well basically we'll be able to fit a pipe underneath here. And then, then we also have the cap, the cap here, obviously, because now that's awfully close to this. So it is not the best. So the next best thing that we were pondering is whether we can fit it here. Behind the drives. Yeah. Now you might you might think uh, there's even less space here. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> yes, yes, you're right. There's less space here. However, what we can do is mount this higher, so there's space. So you can't see that much. So uh, if you imagine it's inside there. Yeah. Yeah. You can mount this a bit higher, so you have more space for the pipes themselves, and because of the way the seat works. Can I move the seat, actually? This is the furthest position back, okay, right. to the seat. Yeah. Okay, so actually, without hindering the seat's uh, movement, we can raise this higher, Yeah. like so. And if we ever need to fill the system, we just push the seat all the way forward so we can access the, uh, yeah. the cap. I mean, obviously we have certain concerns about how to mount this, mm -hmm. but in terms of overall clearance, it's worth investigating. So our other concerns about this uh, situation here is obviously this is going to be hot and then we have some cables here. So we'll have to insulate uh, the tank from the cables somehow, obviously with some insulation or something or other. So despite our two concerns that we don't have somewhere to mount the top of the tank and that we have to insulate the tank from the cables, this spot currently seems like the best contender so far. Um, uh, if we find one around here um, that's better, we'll let you know, or you can let us know. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's assume that that is going to live here somehow. Okay, so now we have the, um, the fuel tank. Yeah, so we had two main choices. We could either have a separate fuel tank like this one here, or we could connect it to our van's fuel tank via an auxiliary hose, both of which are possible. But because we want to be able to track how much fuel our hydronic heating system is actually using and we don't want to screw up the MPG of our van, we went with a separate tank. And again, just like the header tank, we prefer to be able to mount this tank on the inside of the van because we don't want to mess around trying to mount this on the outside, but we'll see. But hopefully we can fit it on the inside. So let's have a look. Can you uh, pop it in there? What, in the seat? Yeah. We're running out of spaces for stuff, so... Well, it just about fits. I mean, I know we measured. The only issue about this seat is that the floor is slanted. Well, why is that an issue? Turn it, turn it to, so it's on the same axis. Well, no, like all the fuel, for example, I know we're on a slant, this doesn't help. But like all the fuel will go down to that end. So it might be worth building a, a wedge to level it out a bit. That's fine, so it's not a big problem as long as it doesn't raise it too much, but it seems to fit. Look at that space. Yeah. That's at least five centimeters of space. Mm -hmm. And even if you raise that a little bit higher, that's yeah. still space. So we could fit it here. Okay, so that's one possibility. Yeah. I mean, how does this affect, how, how hard is it to refuel it? Well, in terms of refueling, we could just have it so that we can just like disconnect it. Mm -hmm. Like disconnect it and just be able to pull out the entire red tank. 
Okay, so it, it, it seems to fit easily at the moment. Yeah. Also, we can store a, sep a spare tank next to it. There seems to be enough space to have a spare tank. Yeah, so you could have one tank connected to the system, mm -hmm. and then you could just have another tank stored up here as a, as a spare for the van and for the heating. So if we have the tanks the way they are right now, how would the pipes need to get to them, and where do we need to drill holes? So we have the heater mounted around here, outside, and you have the fuel line coming from this knob needing to get somehow here. Yeah. So the blue fuel line will have to travel outside, 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 and then poke up inside here. Yeah, I think I would definitely prefer to drill the hole up in the van in the seat rather than in our floor. We only should drill in our floor if we have to in this part. Okay, so looking at the diagrams. <laughs> Oi, notes everywhere. So we said the fuel line comes here and it has to go to that seat yeah. traveling outside. So then that's that line here. Yeah, that little fuel line. Now, the other ones. So that that is so um, one is the exhaust, one is the air intake. Yeah. Right? So they're both on the outside. They don't need to come in the van. So we're going to have two pipes connected there. So these two come up through the floor. So we have two holes for these pipes. Mm -hmm. and then all the other connections to the tank and to the other points will just do on the inside. So we don't have to worry about drilling holes anywhere else. So that means right. we need but two holes. Two holes here, one hole over there. That's what we need. Three holes. One for the fuel, two for the pipe coming out the heater. Okay, now assuming that this is true, uh, we need to make a final decision here, um, or all of this is going to go to hell. So what we need to talk about is whether to go for a, a one-pipe system or a two-pipe system. So we have, uh, these are the S-bar diagrams here. So. That's a one pipe system and that's a two pipe system uh, diagram. And this is our original one pipe system designs with, with some parallel piping. And this diagram is us planning a two pipe system. So Sam, would you like to explain what the hell I'm talking about? I cried when you tried to explain this to me. So... There, there. <laughs> I can try. So after we bought the heater, we started doing more reading and more research because a lot of uh, papers came with the heater mm. and how to install it. And there's different ways that you can actually install the systems. You can do one pipe linear systems, or you can do uh, two pipe uh, parallel systems, mm. or you can do a hybrid version of it, <laughs> essentially. Uh, and there's no right or wrong answer because it's mm. all dependent on what you need and how you're going to use it. I mean, this paper talks a lot about uh, don't restrict the water flow and don't introduce restrictions here and there. It doesn't fully explain how not to do it. Uh, so we need to do some plumbing research. So the short of it is a one pipe system is the system that we were planning to build when we bought the, uh, the the heating kit. Yeah, so um, when we laid everything out on the floor and connected it all up in series, one thing after the other, that is a one-pipe system. Yeah. Everything just runs after each other. Yeah, and that was in the unboxing video if you would like to see that. Now, the problem with the one-pipe system is that the first components will get the priority heat. So, for example, if you have the water heat exchanger first and then you have the air matrix after, then when you're using the hot water, the heat from the air matrix would be less. Yeah. How much less? I don't know. But theoretically speaking, when you're obviously using up the heat to heat up your water, you'll have less heat being transferred to your air through your air matrix. And this becomes a problem the more components you add to the system. So say you have six or seven, then the seventh one in line might receive very little heat. Again, we don't know how much exactly, because it all depends on what you're running, but it can be significant. Meanwhile, with a two-pipe system, uh, you essentially have uh, two main highways. One going out the heater and then one coming back into the heater. And then along that highway, you can tap out extra pipes to go to other components and the heat will be the same along that highway. So you can pull out six different lines from that main highway mm -hmm. and all of those lines will receive that 80 degrees glycol heat, yeah. which means all the components receive 
give or take the equal amount of heat. I believe that two pipe systems are largely used in houses. So when, yeah. so when your, your radiator is working and, and stuff, they use two pipe systems, not one pipe systems. Esper have told us that unless you have a very short loop, uh, you really shouldn't be using a single pipe system to yeah. get this sorted. And because we're building our system with the idea to expand it later or and add maybe another air matrix uh, or radiator, and, or radiator <laughs> and because we're having the underfloor heating, that is already complicating the, the, the loop uh, beyond what uh, a single pipe system can probably achieve successfully. Now the thing that we have to take into account with two pipe systems is how the flow rate changes at each intersection. So for example, how fast is the water moving? Do you need an extra pump somewhere? When the glyco moves from, for example, a 20 millimeter diameter pipe to uh, our underfloor heating pipe, which is only 12 millimeter, mm. how does that affect the flow rate? Um, will it cause a problem? Will, can it cause too much pressure so it bursts? Is the liquid going to move um, fast enough or too slow? All of these questions are those restrictions that uh, we have to not introduce or at least introduce with somewhat uh, prior knowledge to what we're doing. So based upon all of that, we're gonna do a two pipe system. And our biggest question marks right now are, what type of uh, joints do we need at the intersections? And do we need uh, like a, a helper pump somewhere? I'm hoping not, but those are kind of the main questions. And the main highway is actually just going to live under this couch where we're sat where here. We're sitting, yeah. yeah, we're not gonna run the main highway under the floor because we don't have space. Uh, we're not gonna try and run it through the shower or anything. We don't really need it there. We just need it at the moment under the couch. So this here is the main highway loop coming out the heater and going back. So it comes out the heater, goes down, comes all the way to where the underfloor is, and then loops all the way back into the heater. Here's some color. So for the air matrix, it taps off the main highway then we have a T-junction here and it goes all the way down into the air matrix. And then the pipe coming out the air matrix follows the path in a separate pipe going back into the return highway back to the heater to be reheated. Because obviously the heat's now being used up by the air matrix. So it comes out one highway and back in the other highway. So for the hot water heater, it goes out and into the hot water. Then it goes through the heat exchanger, comes out the heat exchanger and into the return pipe back to the heater. Now for the underfloor. The underfloor heating is the, the, the least priority intensive <laughs> uh, um, component in this uh, scenario. Yeah. Uh, it'll be just the end, end of the loop and we'll have a, uh, a valve at the entrance. So basically it, will, it would, so the highway is gonna loop and then you'll have the uh, underfloor heating coming off that end yeah. with a valve on. So which, we, can, we can turn it off. Yeah, which means we can turn the underfloor heating off even if we want hot water, which was, quite a big concern to a couple of you in our unboxing video when you were like, if you want hot water in the summer, you don't want to run the hot water under the floor as well. Which of course you're absolutely right. We don't we don't want that. We just didn't show it in the video because uh, it was just a bit complicated for, 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 for the demonstration. This step in the uh, figuring out the heating is actually very important, you know, ju just as uh, visualizing and, and having a look because if we don't think about what we're doing, we can then drill through something that we can't repair. And also by inviting you on this brainstorming session, uh, uh, you can join our, our thought process and, you know, give us ideas. If you see a solution that you think might work better uh, and you'd like us to consider it then leave it leave it in the comments below that that's why we're making this video because I'm sure some of you have done something similar before uh, or doing it or you may have more knowledge <laughs> in, in the in the trade itself or, yeah. which is basically plumbing yeah uh, largely plumbing the delicious I think <laughs> yeah uh, you know and and you know if you if you have worked with radiators you'll probably know how to do this system. Mm. All right, so that is the two pipe system all laid out. Everything's connected and it seems like it will all be relatively good. Apart from the hole drilling, which we need to figure out, I think we're good to go. Oh, and also we need to figure out all the T pieces as well, the places where we put the giant circles. But yeah, so if you've got any advice or any questions or any helpful tips, leave them in the comments below and we'll catch you next week.